Hello everybody, today another little bit of a rant from me about one of the automotive industry's latest creations and rather than do this from the comfort of my office, I've instead brought you to here, sunny and beautiful Scotland. Yes, it does exist. What are we discussing today? Well, the latest car to come from the ever-growing line of Resto Mods, the ProDrive P25, a car that I should desperately, desperately want but can't help but be underwhelmed by. In theory, the idea of the ProDrive P25 is an absolutely brilliant one. In case you're not sure what it is that I'm talking about, ProDrive, who are the company behind many of Subaru's most iconic rally cars, have decided to hop on the rest of my bandwagon and build what is essentially a modern day version of the iconic Subaru Impreza 22B. That was a two-door version of the Impreza, sold in various different markets, but particularly popular here, and was in theory, though not in practice, a road going version of the late 1990s World Rally car. Now seems like the absolute perfect moment to build something like that for a number of reasons. First off, prices of all things Japanese are going through the roof, including the 22B. I recently drove one that was valued at around a quarter of a million pounds. Examples have sold for more than 300 grand. 20 years ago, the same car would struggle to get 30. The classic car market is also experiencing unprecedented growth too. However, because these cars are now becoming so valuable, people are a little bit cautious about driving them. And truth be told, many of these iconic cars aren't always that great to actually drive. Case in point, the 22B. It's a fine thing, but the cold hard reality is it's not really that much better to drive than any other Impreza. I'm sure the people at ProDrive are not unaware of the popularity of recent things like the Delta Integrale Resto mod, the Redux version of the BMW E30 M3, and of course the whole host of various different types of 911, from the Singer to all of the other backdates that have come and gone. People are clearly very happy with spending very large sums of money on the right car if it is done in the right way. I'm sure 10 or 15 years ago, the idea of a several hundred thousand pound Impreza based car would be simply unfeasible. But now, the kind of people into these cars have money. So the time is right. And if anyone were to get it right, it would be ProDrive. Because they are the people that built the genuine WRC cars, not only do they have the knowledge necessary to make a good car, but they've also got some serious pedigree. So when they said they were building a limited run of 25 cars inspired by the old 22B, I thought this was gonna be something truly incredible. And then they lifted the covers off of it. And what I saw was an old Impreza 22B. Now, they've done things to it, for sure. The body is mostly carbon fibre. The engine is a reworked version of the modern-day 2.5-litre Impreza unit. It has a sequential gearbox in it with a proper rally-style single-paddle shift. That's very cool. It has a proper handbrake in it, so you can do big, proper slidey turns in it. That's also very cool. And naturally, there is the pedigree as well. But... What I thought they were going to do is a car inspired by the old Impreza. What I saw seemed to be the old Impreza. It's a copy of. If they'd said to me, this is simply a kit for an old Impreza, I would have believed them. But it's not. And then we get to the kicker, the price. These are £460,000 plus that. So, in other words, it's going to be 600 grand by the time you've ticked a few optional extras. That's daft. That's completely and totally daft, for several reasons which I'll now go into. First off, I fail to see the value for money. I genuinely really do. It's some carbon panels, it's a, yes, admittedly trick gearbox, 
but an engine that most people could probably do, 400, 500 horsepower impressors are not exactly a, a rare thing. And yes, I'm sure Pro Drive are going to do a very good job of it, but ultimately, it is a modified Impreza. It doesn't look any different. I'm sure there are some subtle changes, and they got Peter Stevens in who styled the original, which is very nice, but ultimately, it's still an old Impreza. The core of it, the chassis, is still an old Impreza. Yes, they've done some things to it, stiffened it up in a few key areas, but ultimately, it's still 25 year old Impreza. That's not very impressive. For the over half a million pound that they're gonna be charging, I was expecting something closer to the uh, Lancia Stratos remake that used a Ferrari 430 Scuderia as its donor car. The joke now being that a uh, Impreza 22B as a donor car would be more expensive than a 430 Scuderia. A lot of my friends sent me pictures of the show car, which was at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. I have to say, I'm rather unimpressed with the panel gaps and positively shocked at the interior, because what it is, is the interior from an old Subaru. I know they've done some things to it, re-trimmed it, put a fancy dash in it and all that, but ultimately, it's an old Subaru. I'm struggling to see the 50 grand of difference between it and my old three grand WRX. Yes, in some ways I'm being a, a little bit cheeky there, it's a bit harsh, but point still, if you parked it in a car park somewhere, nobody would really even bat an eyelid. Perhaps that appeals to some, but I just don't get it. Now, yes, all 25 examples are already sold, which means I am already wrong. I have no idea what I'm talking about. James, shut up, you silly, silly man. Evidently, there is a market. But what market? Who's buying these things? I just, I just don't get it. And I don't think they're gonna be driven. In which case, why not make them incredibly pretty? Why not make them gorgeous, like the Delta Integrale remake? Okay, sure, you had a Delta Integrale to start off with, which is already a much prettier car than a Subaru, but still, I'm just not seeing where the serious, significant reworking effort is. I'm just not. When you consider, say, the Jaguar Project 8, granted, a very different car, more production-based, was 150 grand, that's positively good value. That also had some serious in-depth engineering work behind it. The Impreza, I'm just not understanding. What I would have been maybe more impressed by is if ProDrive had come out and said, look, what this actually is, is not really a 22B. This is a WRC car with number plates. And I think they're trying to imply that's the case. It hasn't helped that a lot of the material has been somewhat conflicting. I've seen different prices quoted. I've even seen things like different numbers quoted for the gearbox times. One said it shifted in 80 milliseconds, one said it shifted in 60. If it's 60, that's pretty decent. That's the shift speed of the 430 and that's quick. If it's 80, that's a little bit slower and that's not anywhere near as impressive. For a sequential box, I'd expect better. I also have to wonder how long a sequential box would actually last if you really tried to use it on the road. Historically speaking, they're not particularly pleasant or daily drivable things, which is why no one's really put one in a road car. Yes, I know, I just said I wish they'd make it more like a rally car and now I'm wondering that it isn't enough like a road car, but you see my point, it's some weird halfway house. I would have rather they just said, look, it's just a fire breathing, full tilt, proper rally car with number plates, but I don't, it just doesn't give me that vibe, it doesn't give me that feel. Maybe it needs stickers, and then it'll work. But if the way the car is made special is in how it drives, that's great if people are going to drive it, but they're not. I also think maybe it would have made more sense if they'd said, look, I'll tell you what the price of this car is. It's not £460,000 plus VAT. It's £200,000, and you source the donor car. Then you work out what the real value of it is to you. I don't know what they're using as a donor car. The people I know who know them don't know what they're using as a donor car. I can tell you the deposit for one is a quarter of a million quid. That's a lot of money. And the suspicion there is that that essentially is the build cost and the rest is profit. So if you don't pay them in the end, they've still made their money. I'm also generally, to be honest, quite worried that this is simply an indication of where the market is going. People aren't interested in building more affordable, more accessible cars. What we're going to see now is just a continual stream of cars for people that can afford them, but can't drive them for whatever reason, lack of time, lack of inclination. They're gonna treat them like a, an asset rather than a car. And that's tragic. 
I love the idea of cars being more accessible to more people, and I think special cars should be more accessible to more people. I really praise Toyota, for example, for having made the GR Yaris, the GR86, so on and so forth. Those are special, those are cool. I can see the value in a GR Yaris, even at the overs people are asking. The Impreza, I'm just not. Maybe I'm just not seeing this right. Perhaps I'm just an old misery guts. And I would love your feedback on that. So please hop into the comment section down below, hit like or maybe dislike, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification icon so you'll be notified of every single new video release. And I shall see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.